My husband almost killed our baby and my toddler saved him. My husband has always had trouble paying attention, but I never thought it would come to this. Our neighborhood is weirdly laid out with cars zooming by at crazy speeds at all hours off the day I was folding clothes when I heard our toddler screaming, Dad, help! That tone made me drop everything and sprint outside. What I saw made my blood run cold, our newborn in his stroller, careening towards the busy street. I screamed and ran to him barely stopping the stroller in time. My baby girl's hands and knees were scratched up because she tripped trying to run after the stroller. I snatched up my baby, heart pounding, and scanned for my husband. He wasn't watching. He was chatting with neighbors, completely oblivious. The anger I felt was unlike anything I've ever experienced. I stormed up to him, shouting in disbelief. He looked shocked at first, then realized what almost happened. The apologies and tears came pouring out, but it was too late. I couldn't wrap my head around how he could be so careless, so blind to our toddler's screams and the stroller rolling away. I packed up the kids and left, staying with my parents. They're on my side but my husband keeps texting, begging forgiveness, calling it an honest mistake. But I can't shake the terror of almost losing my baby because he couldn't focus for a single second my baby girl got hurt in the process, because he couldn't pay attention. I almost lost my son because he couldn't pay attention. I can't stop crying. I feel so guilty. I wish this all never happened. Sorry it's short, I just want to hold my babies and I can't stop shaking every time I think about it. What if I was just one second late, would I have been planning a funeral? And the reason I left the house instead of him was because I hate that house. I don't feel like it's safe for the kids with all the traffic and I was right. It's my husband's work house, I can't be running either. I had a C-section less six weeks ago. A lot of people are saying why wasn't I watching the kids, I was doing their laundry like a parent. Does he takes them for walks to have bonding time with them, he literally created this by himself. This has never happened before, how was I supposed to know and people saying, why didn't I get him checked out? I'm not his mother he is 30 years old, I'm sick of people acting like I have to parent my own husband while I literally have a newborn a toddler and I'm still healing from a c-section, that I teared my stitches from when I ran to get my baby, I don't care if it was his ADHD, the court wouldn't care either. If he killed my child, he would have went to prison, either way. I've lied again to my parents about college for the past two semesters. I signed up for classes and my parents have been paying for them for the last two semesters. They think I've been going to my classes and getting decent grades due to me lying whenever they ask about it, and making them believe in a completely false reality. I have withdrawn from every class the last two semesters, with no refund, and their money has gone completely down the drain because of me. My parents would have been more understanding if I was honest from the beginning but now I feel like I'm in too deep. I know this all is pathetic, but I just want to take the easy route and run away and lose contact. I don't know why I can't bring myself to talk to my parents. I don't know what to do. I legitimately don't have any excuses for myself and my behavior. I can't put any blame on anxiety or depression. I've been feeling pretty well for the past year of pushing guilt aside and only caring about short-term happiness. It's not even the first time I've done this. When I first went to college when I was 17, I also failed some classes one semester. And a year later I failed all my classes. They found out those times and did what they could to help. Which included some very expensive therapy. However this is the third time I've done this, and the third time I was dishonest to my parents and I believe it's unforgivable. I know I need to come clean about this, but I want to take an easy way out again. I want to start using harder drugs, so I at least have some sort of reason for being terrible. I don't know what to do. What would instantly destroy your life just by doing it once? I have a friend who was driving home from dropping his buddy at the airport at 2am. Going along the highway, nothing weird happening, normal calm night. Then boom, Buddy hears and feels a massive impact against his 4 4 4 Gains control of the car, slows down, investigates, it's a person, or was a person, just bent up on the road from rolling under my friend's truck. Fast forward a few hours, the cops are called, they're there asking questions, identifying the corpse. Buddy gets taken in for more questioning about the speed he was going as etc. Eventually the cops release him, no charges. He asks has something happened. They identified the deceased, and contacted his family. Turns out his family had been contacting a different police station for hours trying to find their son. Story goes something happened in his life, and he said goodbye to his family cryptically before disappearing for hours. Conclusion was he decided to commit by lying on the highway. My friend just happened to be at the wrong place wrong time. Didn't make what my buddy went through any easier, took him years to get over it. This exact scenario nearly happened to me and an old roommate. 
we were riding home from work and some dude had decided to lay down in the middle of the dark part of the road. We were seconds away from hitting this guy when my roommate saw him and swerved out of the way. It was totally messed up. Road rage. Guy I went to middle school with jumped out of his car and beat a guy he was road raging with so badly that he was partially paralyzed by the end of it. Guy was 19 and got a 45-year prison sentence. Completely fucked his whole life up, and will only have a few years in the outside, and that's if he's lucky and lives that long. Dear men, what makes a lady less approachable at the club? 1. Can't think of a worse situation when she's hot and is surrounded by her girlfriends. Even more when they're not ugly either. I'm very confident but I can't lie you need balls of steel sometimes or some friends it makes things easier. 2. Girls with very dramatic eyelash extension and very long nails and has that, you can't afford me, look on her face. Do you know nails these days go for $100? I'm a woman and that shocks me. I can't believe people pay that for a temporary thing that practically handicaps you and doesn't even look good. I'm a millennial and the last time I had my nails done was in the early 2000s when short French manicures were in style and it cost $25. 3. Dance moves don't matter, no one in a club is ever good sober enough to dance well. Assuming she's already attractive enough, it's going to come down to her body language and who her friends are and what they're like. If she's got a fuck-off look about her and is surrounded by a group of girls side-eyeing a mean look at any guy around then I ain't gonna bother. 4. Probably focusing all her attention on friends and her phone and not letting her eyes wander a bit. Whenever I'm out I'm always trying to gauge if someone is interested in scanning the room. But no one ever tries to make eye contact, so I assume no interest. Am I the a-hole for having an affair with my girlfriend since she said we are just friend? I had been seeing Amanda for over a year. We went on dates, were intimate, lived together basically acted like a couple in every way except she would insist we were just friends whenever I tried to make it official. It started to really bother me, that after a year she still wouldn't acknowledge we were in a relationship. One night at a bar, I met Lisa, who was very forward about being promiscuous. I thought since Amanda and I were just friends, it wouldn't be cheating to hook up with Lisa. So I took Lisa home to the apartment Amanda and I shared, and we were cuddling on the bed, when Amanda walked in. She was furious and gave me the silent treatment for days. After some groveling apologies from me, she finally agreed to be my official girlfriend. It's been six months since. However, Amanda and some of my friends keep saying I was out of line to hook up with Lisa, since Amanda and I were clearly more than just friends, despite what she said. But I figured since she kept insisting we were just friends, I was free to see other people. Am I the a-hole? I faked a seizure in class to get attention from my classmates nobody knows about this and I'm not planning to tell anyone. When I was 13 and in 8th grade I was a total loser and, and an outcast at my Catholic school. Having Asperger's it was difficult for me to fit in, and I quite desperately did weird shit to try and be liked and have people care about me. It went from lies about being raped and faked, having cancer, but that's a story for another day. This came out of nowhere. I remember being really bored in English and I thought oh, let's start screaming and crying and get people's attention. So that's what I did. I tapped the shoulder of the girl next to me and told her my head really hurt. She brushed it off and then I began to breathe heavily and I started shaking. A couple students noticed and began to ask what wrong. Then I dropped to my knees out of my chair and began screaming and crying wists clutching my head. The teacher made everyone evacuate the room and she called the principal. I was making such a ruckus that I couldn't hear what they were saying around me. Eventually, the ambo showed up and I was escorted out into the ambulance and they gave me that medicine, where it numbs the pain which, I wasn't even in. I made it to the hospital and the nurses and my family were really confused as to what was going on and I was fucking loving the attention. They ruled it out as a severe headache due to stress and sent me home. The next day my peers were asking if I'm okay and some were asking if I was having a seizure. I seemed to have scared them as one girl told me she started crying because of how loud I was screaming and everything. The worst part was that I didn't feel guilty at the time, I just ate up the attention and became the talk of the school for some time. I was a very sad and lonely girl due to the social status at my school. Thank God I got transferred to a new school two years later and graduated there with no issue. What is the most obvious sign a couple won't last long? 1. Different argument styles. Shows contempt for spouse. Talks shit about each other to friends. 2. Read an article somewhere where responses to bids for attention are a huge indicator. 3. Look at their face when they get a phone call from the other person. Tells you all you need to know. My husband and I were climbing and he bailed in the middle of an attempt to go answer his phone which was stashed with our shoes and stuff. I thought it was odd because he's generally pretty good about ignoring calls when he decides to unplug for a bit. Whatever, maybe important work call. 
he gets part way to the lockers and then stops, turns around, says, I'm dumb, you're standing right here, and goes back to his problem. Found out on the way home, some other phone was apparently using my ringtone. I've been having a weird couple months and freely admit to crying like an idiot when I realized he immediately stopped what he was doing to answer, because he thought it was me. 4. Lack of trust. Not necessarily about the big stuff, fidelity, money, your real name, but namely in basic, everyday communication. If one or both partners is constantly questioning what the other person meant, or are constantly looking for reasons to get offended or taken aback by what the other says, it doesn't bode well for the long-term prospects. As a witness you can feel the underlying tension when they interact. The stress of it all usually leads to resentment and dissolution of the relationship. 5. When they fight with each other in a passive-aggressive way in front of friends. Went to this dinner once where the guy was showing off his new plasma TV, and it ended up with the girl throwing one of his awards into the TV to smash it. Really uncomfortable to be a guest there. Man, what did she do to make you realize she's the one? Loneliness. My now wife completely tanked our first date. There were layoffs at her company, her best friend had just backstabbed her, her family was having issues, etc etc. On the one hand I appreciated her authenticity and courageousness to just wear her heart on her sleeve. On the other hand the entire date was just one huge fucking red flag. I was also going on a lot of dates looking for a long-term fit and was nexting girls left and right, if I didn't feel like a second or third date was necessary, as I really wanted to be intentional about getting into a relationship. I had my guard up and was ready to cut it if it went south, but I decided that she was having a bad day and that there was something there and, I wanted to give her a shot on a second date. I had shared on our first date that, growing up, I loved those microwavable pies you could get at gas stations and especially loved apple. When I showed up for our second date, she had a gas station apple pie waiting for me as an apology for the first date and bam, we were off. Knew I wanted to marry her after our third date. 2. I woke up with a headache in the middle of the night. She got up, brought me ibuprofen and grapefruit juice which is my favorite non-caffeinated beverage. That was a type of thoughtfulness I had never experienced, anyone can give you your meds, but she wanted to comfort me, not just fix me. What is slowly killing people without their knowledge? 1. Loneliness. Seriously people, we evolved as a eusocial species. We don't just do better when we cooperate in groups, we need extensive contact with a small group of other people to stay healthy. How many of us are starved for touch? For hugs and cuddling? For the sound of the voices of our loved ones? Loneliness kills just as sure as heart disease does. 2. Bad sleep hygiene. So overlooked as a danger and as a matter of fact even glorified because you are apparently cool that you sleep deprivate. Here is the bad news. There is no body adaptation to this and the nature hasn't figured out to adapt because we are the only species dumb enough to do this. I talk to so many insomniacs and it baffles me. People who run on 3 to 5 hours, what is that? I'm so territorial about my sleep, I'm a nurse, so my shifts start super early and my husband knows I am in bed around 9 and I don't budge on that if I work the next day. 3. Colon cancer. It's on pace to be the number one killer in young folk. Early symptoms can be easy to ignore or pass off. You should always see a doctor if you have any of the symptoms. It's easy to treat if found early but most people don't see the doctor until symptoms have progressed. I know the American healthcare system sucks. But I got a colonoscopy, that I had to pay out of pocket since I had no family history and was under the recommended age. I had 8 polyps, 6 were precancerous, I was 37. Eat your fiber folks. It's insanely easy to add into your diet and is extremely beneficial to your health. And exercise. You don't have to do anything crazy just get up and intentionally move.